Welcome to Attic to Basement Estate Cleanouts with Raccoons, Episode 18, Antique Furniture and a Hoarder. First, in this episode, I want to show a simple Northeast DC home with older wooden furniture throughout. I was called by someone who saw my listing in the Yellow Pages in 2006. She was cleaning out a relative's home and just wanted an assessment done. I charged my hourly fee for an assessment. She asked who I might know that buys furniture outright. I gave her two people's names. One was the owner of Associated Auctioneers and the other was a man who sometimes bought furniture outright. Neither of them thought there was enough furniture to make a pickup economical. The client called me and asked for another idea. I gave her the name and number of Todd Greenstone, who has a custom farming business and had taken items to auction for me for a few years during his downtime and he did come and pick up the furniture and paid her $500. If the client had been able to take the furniture herself out to the auction, they would have sold it for her. A minimum charge for taking things to auction from DC with their auctioneer's truck was at least $240. <laughs> house in Gaithersburg, Maryland was a handful. I had done only two houses for the attorney before. The house was built in 1974 and was 2,200 square feet. You'll see from the photos at the end it was full of magazines and furniture. The wife had moved out decades ago, taking the young son and moving to the Midwest. The son was an adult himself now and had the Maryland attorney take care of getting the house emptied. I had two helpers work with me over five days. The junk hauler took away nine and a quarter loads of trash to the dump. There was an old station wagon in the driveway that had flat tires because it had sat there so long. There was a mercury marquee in the garage with expired license plates. The interior was worn out. There was an electric organ and a hospital bed in the house. An electric organ can usually be sold at auction if it works. Upright pianos I couldn't send to auction as they were usually out of tune, the cabinets were beat up, and sometimes ivory keys were broken. And we found more than one piano that mice had used the innards for their home. I did occasionally come across a baby grand piano, and sometimes they could be sold at auction. It depended on the brand and condition. If the piano, or if the person set vases on the top of the case, and there were a lot of watermarks on the finish, then it might not be sold at auction. If the keys were really yellow and some were chipped at the corners, they would not sell. One house I worked in, a piano tuner came out and worked on the piano as it was a baby grand and was donated to a music school, and it was a good brand. I have seen more than one moldy upright piano broken apart with a sledgehammer in the basement and brought out in pieces. The tuning board is very heavy. A lot of uprights were kept in the basement, and after the kids moved out of the house, it became a bookcase or some place for framed photos more than a piano. The humidity in most basements is not conducive to a piano holding its value. Some pianos that the auction house didn't want, I was able to sell on Craigslist. The pianos were usually bought by dads buying their small child's first piano. They didn't want to pay too much in case the child didn't stick with the music lessons. I asked for $100 to $200. The new owner was responsible for having a piano mover come and take it away. Pianos need to be tuned after they've been moved up and down stairs or onto a truck. This house also had a hospital bed in the family room. I listed it on Craigslist and one person contacted me within hours and we set up a day and time for him to pick it up. He never showed. Another person had called me and said she needed it and since it was a Friday in June, the junk callers took it apart for me and put it in front of the garage and it was picked up over the weekend. It could be in Africa now for all I know. There's one photo coming up where you will see a corner pile of boxes almost to the ceiling. That was in the master bedroom on top of the bed. This house was a lot of hard work for me and the junk hauler. I got paid, paid soon after we finished, but the junk hauler had to wait months to get paid because the sun balked at so many loads of trash. 
I don't think the son had been in the house in years and had no idea how bad it was. He told the attorney he would come in, he would have come in with his truck and some buddies, and they would have slept in the house and emptied out the trash if he'd known how much the trash invoice was going to be. I emailed some of the photos I had taken to the lawyer so he could email the son. No one could sleep in that house the first few days as there was no place on the beds and even on the floor to put a sleeping bag. The junk hauler had a 15 lawn box truck. How many loads would you need to do with a pickup truck? And how much would the dump fee be for an out-of-state truck? The attorney tried to spell out to the son how much it would have cost him to travel east and stay at a hotel along the way and in, and in the beginning in Maryland and pay for meals for his buddies the whole time. Still, he didn't want to give the go-ahead to the attorney to pay the junk hauler. The junk hauler talked to the attorney on the phone and sent registered letters to the attorney. When the son eventually said he would pay the invoice, a check did not arrive after two weeks and the junk hauler had to start calling the attorney again. The junk hauler had to go to his own attorney who suggested he start the process of small claims court. Eventually he got paid three months after I did. Out of 800 houses, payment was only a problem with three clients over 15 years. I would sometimes be asked if I could wait until the house was sold to be paid for my work. There was no money left in the homeowner's bank. It was all tied up in the house. Some of the houses I worked in were bought so long ago for under $15,000, and now we're going to sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars. This probably happened three to four times a year. Now, Washington, D.C. didn't get hit as hard in the 2008 housing crash because people were always moving into and out of D.C. for government jobs or military transfers. A couple of times I was even given money as a deposit for my work ahead of time because the guardians were trying to spend down the person's money as they were going to place the homeowner into a nursing home. When I would do the initial walkthrough with the guardian, they would ask how much I thought the total bill would be and I would give them my best estimate and they would pay me at least half of what I thought it would cost to do my part. It took me years to give accurate estimates though. I never got goods in trade for work. The guardians and the executors had to keep a record for the court, and it was clearer if they paid me for an invoice I sent them, and I paid them for anything I wanted to purchase out of the house. As I've mentioned before, I've bought end tables, and once I bought a desk, and once a wooden medicine cabinet. I have bought a paperweight or two, and a few pieces of silver jewelry over the years. Well, that's it. Please click subscribe if you like these videos. I also have a Facebook page with the video and photos called 800 Houses, 800 Jobs. I'm able to load more photos from the jobs mentioned on Facebook than I put in most of the videos. See you next time.